Hello coders, I am Jared with Renaissance Coders and in this video we are going to continue with our Cannon Blast complete game series in Unity 3D. For this video we are going to complete our trail renderer for our cannonball, add in some UI to fire our cannon, and edit some of our scripts to allow UI buttons to fire the cannon. Okay now, okay now, as you can see here, I'm actually going to start off in Photoshop for a change because we need to create a texture for our cannonballs trail renderer. So let's do that first. Okay, so the first thing I'm actually going to do is unlock my background layer and then just put black as the background. And I'm just doing that so we can actually see the textures that I'm going to be creating. Okay, so now that I've got my background layer, the color that I want in order to see my textures, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer and I'm going to go into gradient tool in Photoshop. Now the gradient tool works a lot like the gradient tool in Unity, so it should be pretty familiar to you coders. For our first gradient, I'm actually going to have full opacity on both ends with no opacity in the center. So let's go ahead and actually apply that one here. I'm just going to go to start to end here. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and create a new layer. Hide that one. And now what I actually want to do is sort of the inverse of that. So I'm going to go back into my gradient tool and I'm going to click here, up the opacity to 100% in the middle, drop it down to 0% on the ends. And it should be 10% at these midpoints. Okay, now let's do the same thing from top to bottom here. Okay, again, that looks pretty cool. So we're gonna create one more. Let's go ahead and hide this one. And we're gonna create one more layer. Go to our gradient tool again. And for this one, we're gonna get, we're going to do like we did for the first one with a little bit more thickness on the outer edges. So we're going to go back out to our edges up at 200%. And I'm actually gonna move these from location 25 to let's go to 35 and 65 okay now let's see how this looks okay that is a lot of color information but again I just want to see how this one actually looks in the game so we can actually hide our base layer now and then and now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and save these so we can go to file and we can just do a save as okay and so what I'm going to do is actually save this directly into my project so as you can see I've got my project set up here but I need to create a new folder so I'm going to create a new folder called sprites and now for our type I'm gonna change the format to a PNG okay that should be fine and now let's just give it a name I'm gonna call this one Canon ball text one and those settings should be fine now let's hide that one open it up and again we're just going to file save as png and i can just change this to a two okay and for the last one file save as png again and change this to a three okay now let's go ahead and save that last one now if we go back over to unity we should have a re-import occur that was quick now if we click on these we can see that they're totally white here and what i believe is happening is we need to change alpha is transparency apply that there we go that's what we're looking for so let's go ahead and click on both of these alpha is transparency and apply it so now what we actually need to do is test these out on our cannonballs so let's go to our materials here. We're gonna click on our cannonball trail material and we're gonna actually add a texture here. Scroll down to find our texture and let's try the crazy one first. All right, let's see, let's change the tint color a little bit. Let's go with like a, well actually let's try white first just to see how that looks. Now I'm just gonna click play and we're gonna up this guy and pew. So we don't really see a lot of difference there. You know, I didn't really see, let's shoot really close here. I don't see a huge amount of difference occurring in the, well, I could see it there. Okay, so let's click on our cannonball. The best way to look at this one maybe actually to, yeah, there we go. Now I can see it a little bit better. So yeah, I don't really like the way that looks. <laughs> That's okay though. It was easy and quick to create. So let's go back to our cannonball trail and let's change it out to the center line now. Click on our cannonball again. And as we can see, this just makes it a little uh, skinnier and it sort of adds a drop off in the opacity on the edges. So now let's test this out. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's try the last one just in case. And one more time here. Okay, again, when it gets that far away, we can't really tell a difference. 
at all between any of these. When it's up close, we can see a definite difference, but when it gets farther out, we can't really see anything. So I'm just going to drag it in here. And as we can see, we can very clearly see how this one looks. So if you coders like one look better than the other, definitely let me know in the comments below. But I think I'm going to go with the second option. I just think that one looked the best because it sort of creates a drop off in opacity. Yeah, I kind of like the way that one looks. Looks a little jagged at some points, but that's okay. Now, the other thing I did want to actually talk about here is the texture mode for the texture we're adding. We have four options here. We have stretch, tile, distribute per segment, and repeat per segment. So right now it's in stretch, but if we change it to tile, we again don't really see much of a difference here. We can also try the other ones, distribute per segment. Again, not a huge difference occurring. Let's try repeat per segment. I'm not seeing huge difference between any of these really, so I'm just gonna stick with stretch for now. And the other thing we can actually do is change the color of this guy. So if I up my opacity on the tint and I go, let's just go with like a red. There we go, real dark red. And now drag this guy. Okay, now let's see what this looks like in our scene. Drag it up. Pew. Okay, that's kind of cool. But we definitely need to move on. Enough playing with trail renderers, that'll do for now. So the other things that we actually need to do in this tutorial is add in some UI for our game. So let's go ahead and add in some components. We are going to need a slider, a button, and some text in order to get our game working. So let's go ahead and create those. So we're just going to go up to Game Object, UI. We're going to create the slider first. Now let's just create another UI element for the button and a final UI element for our text. Okay, now let's check these guys out. So now when we zoom in, we can see that they are all stacked in the center here. So let's just move our score up to the top. Let's center align it, make the font size bigger, and change the text to say score. Now we are going to update this in the next video, so be sure to stay tuned for that one. Right now we're mainly going to focus on the slider and the button here. So I'm actually going to take my button, I'm going to move it over and down to the right, and I'm going to take my slider, and I'm going to move it over. That looks pretty good, but I am going to actually rotate it in the Z by 90 degrees, so that way it's vertical. Now I'm going to move it over a little bit more. And now let's actually set up the constraints that we need for these UI elements. So the constraints are pretty easy. Let's just drag them over, put them where we need to go. Again, this is just sort of rough prototyping right now. Now let's click on our score, set up the constraints for this guy. Okay, and now for our button. Okay, now let's actually change up the source image on the button. I don't like the button they've got there right now, so we're just going to change that out to be uh let's go with the knob sprite here one thing that you'll notice is since we changed that now the uh button is a little wonky so we need to fix that in order to fix that we can just update our anchors and reduce the top here so let's just set it equal to zero not quite enough okay that looks good enough for now let's change the text inside of here click on text we're just going to change it to say fire and now let's change some of the colors of this button of course it's our fire button so we want it to be red now let's update the text we're gonna make it bigger change the color to a lighter color so we're gonna go that looks pretty good okay now let's go over to our slider let's do some updates here now this is a pretty small slider at the moment so let's go ahead and increase the Y and the X scale we're just gonna make it pretty big here all right now we actually need to update our constraints of course whoops don't want to move it all right now let's check that out see how it looks all right that looks a little bit better I don't like the color of that text up there so let's change this really quickly we'll just go to white okay so now that we've got these basic UI elements set up and again these are not final we're just setting these up so that we can actually implement the UI in the scripts we will replace these a little later on but for right now they're fine and the first script we're actually gonna work in is our Canon controller script so let's go ahead double click this guy and get to work we really only have two updates that we have to make here so the first update we're going to make is for our cannon firing variables. We're going to add another reference for our public slider slider. And since we're accessing a slider, we do have to add using unity engine dot UI here. Very important. And so right now our firepower is just 
totally being pulled from this multiplier and the float firepower here. But I actually want to change that up so that the firepower is derived from our slider. So let's go ahead and comment this line out here. So we're not setting the firepower to an initial value. And if we go down to our fire cannon now, all we have to say is our firepower is equal to our slider dot value multiplied by our power multiplier. Okay, let's go ahead and save that now. We're gonna go back out to our scene and we actually have to check on our sliders value. So if we click on the slider here, now looking at our min value and our max value, that can work as long as we update the power multiplier. So if I click on my cannon here, right now our power multiplier is set to 200. I'm gonna change that up to where it's set to 2000. So now we are going to derive the firepower from that actual sliders value so let's go ahead and test that out okay all I'm gonna do is just turn my cannon up a little bit and I'm going to fire whoops oh <laughs> okay before we do that we actually have to set up the reference for our slider so we can just drag that in there now let's test it okay again just rotate the cannon a little bit and fire now as we can see the cannonball did not go very far at all so if we increase the firepower here and fire again we get a little more firepower and our, our cannonball moves away from us. Update the firepower again here and fire. That's looking a little bit better. Okay, cool. So now we've got that working. The other thing I wanna change up is how we're actually firing the cannon. So right now we're firing it on right click. So let's go ahead and stop this. We can go back out to our script here. And so all we really need to do is just go ahead and remove this line, save it go back out to our scene and if we click on our button we can scroll down a little bit and see on click we want to do something so if we click the plus icon here we can look at an object the object we want to reference is cannon and we want to call a function from our cannon controller that is fire cannon really easy to set up so now let's go ahead and test this out so I'm just going to again rotate my cannon up a little bit increase my slider I'm gonna try right clicking nothing happens click fire, there goes our cannonball. Okay, cool. Okay, coders, that seems like a pretty good place to stop this tutorial. We did get everything implemented that I want to get implemented, which is awesome. In our next video, we are actually going to be implementing the scoring so that when we hit one of the targets down at the bottom or at the end of our level, so one of the three guys down here, then we will award different amounts of points based on which one is hit. So definitely be sure to check that tutorial out, and I look forward to seeing all of you coders in that next tutorial. Okay, coders, I hope that you enjoyed that video. We are constantly adding new videos here on YouTube. Here are a few of our other tutorials just in case you want to keep on learning. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It allows us to continue making great content for you coders. And if you are feeling extremely generous, please check out our Patreon account. If you become a patron of Renaissance Coders, you can get access to our source code and our project files as well. Okay, coders, that's going to do it for this video. As always, thanks for watching.